Hello and welcome to my manga collection video covering more than 300 volumes I've collected over the past couple of years. Uh, my name's DJ and uh, hopefully this will be a very cool introduction to my channel. Alrighty, on the first shelf we have Noragami. Uh, this series is pretty good. Uh, it's a shonen shoujo mix. Uh, it was made by the same artist who did Alive the Final Evolution, not author. Um, unfortunately the author passed away. Um, and you can tell that there are a lot of, like, scenes of, like, death and stuff in this one, so um, I highly recommend it. I hear the anime is pretty good, too. Uh, Fullmetal Alchemist. You guys know Fullmetal Alchemist. If you don't, go ahead and check it out. Uh, this series is definitely worth owning. I've got 1 through 27. Um, I've heard from a lot of people that they don't like these 3-in-1 editions. Uh, personally, I don't think they're that bad. Uh, honestly, the paper quality is pretty cheap, but you tend to get that with a lot of 3-in-1s, and for the price, it's, it's actually pretty good. Next up, the Heroic Legend of Arslan. Um, Heroic Legend of Arslan is an adaptation by Hiromu Arakawa, uh, same author as Fullmetal Alchemist. Uh, it's not written by her, it's an adaptation of a 1980s Japanese novel. Um, it's really good, I'm liking it so far. Anime is kind of, it's kind of meh. Uh, your Lie in April. Um, a lot of people hype this one up. I didn't really like it. I picked it up on a sale because um, Amazon had it for like $5. I had free shipping. It was whatever. I don't know. It's it's okay. Azamanga Dayo, Complete Omnibus. Uh, this is well worth your money. I love it so much. Uh, the comedy is really good. Uh, anime is super funny too. Uh, if you're really into comedy, um, or if you've, I don't know, ever gone to high school, definitely check it out. It's very relatable, very funny. Uh, Yotsuba volumes 1 through 12. Same author as Azumanga Daio over here. Uh, it's very good. Uh, you'll notice that I actually have two different editions. This is, uh, the first edition was by uh, ADV Films, um, or ADV Manga, excuse me. They ended up going out of business, though. Um, so they didn't publish past five, which is kind of sad because I actually like their translation a little bit more than volume six through 12 by Yen Press. But yeah, I definitely recommend checking it out. Oh boy, <laughs> Magic Knight Ray Earth. Uh, thank you, Dark Horse, for publishing this because I had the Tokyo Pop manga um, and it was really good, but I ended up losing it, so oh well. Um, ooh, Magic Knight Ray Earth. First volume first three volumes, rather, are really, really, really good. If you're a fan of, like, old-school Japanese RPGs, definitely check it out. It's awesome. The second one, though, mmm, clamp. Why'd you have to go and ruin my favorite series? It's hard to explain without spoilers, but the first three volumes are all about action, adventure, fun. Uh, the next three are standing around and talking about feelings, um, and not in, like, a good shoujo way. Check out the first, skip the second. Car Captor Sakura. Um, oh boy, another one by Clamp. Actually, you can see, I should probably clarify now, uh, the way I organize is by author, uh, but also by the date of the series that was published. So even though Magic Mary Earth starts with an M, I actually put it before Car Captor Sakura because it was published beforehand. Um, <laughs> this is like a little stink in my collection because I owned this volume. You can see it says, uh, if I, excuse me, Sakura. You can see that it says Car Captor Sakura 1 through 3. But if you go ahead and look at the cover, it says Car Captor Sakura Master of the Clow. It's it's the sequel, supposedly. Thanks, Tokyo Pop. Did a good job there. So it's not very apparent that this is supposed to be actually volumes 7 through 9. Um, I went ahead and purchased the other two volumes anyway, though, because I didn't feel like getting another one of these big ones and dropping money on uh, content I could get for much cheaper. Um, this kind of suffers from the same sort of thing that went on in this series, except much less. Uh, the first six volumes, so collected in books one and two, really, really good. Some of the best Magical Girl stuff you'll ever read. Uh, onward, it's just, it's just okay. It's not good, it's not bad, it's just okay. Um, but I definitely recommend it for any Magical Girl fan. Alrighty, Wish. This is a pretty niche one. Uh, by Clamp. I really, really like it. Um, it's got a bunch of hokey, shoujo-y romance stuff, but honestly, I think it's pretty good. Um, definitely worth your time. I really, really hope it gets republished, because right now the only way you can get it is used. Uh, next up, Clover. This one's kind of a weird one. Um, 
I find it very hard to recommend to people because it's technically not a complete series. Uh, it's, Clamp kind of has this trend where it starts off really, really good with most of its stories and kind of just crashes at the end. Um, Clover's one of them that started off really, really good and then just didn't continue at all. <laughs> so um, I actually recommend it um, if you're a Clamp fan. If you're not, skip it. Angelic Lair. This is one of Clamp's best works. Um, it's good from beginning to end. Uh, it's about, it's kind of weird. Uh, it's a shoujo, but it's about fighting dolls. Um, it's, it's pretty awesome, though. The action's good. It's got some really smart, um, really smart sequences, and I highly recommend it if you're a Clamp fan, and really just if you're any fan. Uh, Chobits, part one, uh, with volumes one through four, and, excuse my camera, Volumes 5 through 8. Um, kind of funny story about this one. Uh, when I was younger, I had some of the regular editions of this one, and I actually managed to pick them up at uh, Borders, which unfortunately is now gone. Um, here's the thing, because the current edition doesn't have it now, but if you take one of these things out, uh, you notice this little thing right here. Uh, it's rated 16+, plus, and for a very good reason. Uh, there's a lot of sexual content in this series. Honestly, though, it's Clamp's best work. I highly recommend it. Go ahead and check it out. Um, it's really seinen-y, shoujo -y, but oh my gosh, it's just, just amazing. It's, it's hard to explain without going into spoilers. Uh, if you've seen Plastic Memories um, that's recently come out and you liked it, you will definitely, definitely like this. Ooh, Tsubasa. Actually, I'm going to talk about both of these, Tsubasa and XXXHolic. Um, eh, it's... Tsubasa's is Clamp's attempt at making a shonen manga, and it works really well for the beginning, but then it suffers that old Clamp syndrome where, toward the later half, it just completely collapses. The plot just completely falls apart. It's, it's really bad. Um, I did like the idea of crossing it over with XXXHolic. When both of these started out, you could really read either one of them and not be that affected, except a major plot point of XXXHolic is only revealed in Tsubasa, and it's just irritating and very, very unfair to fans who only read this series. Um, honestly, the first part of Tsubasa's alright. First ten volumes of this series are fantastic. Um, really just buyer beware on this one. Uh, Kobato, volume one through three. Um, I really, really like Obato, um, the first volume in particular. Uh, it's kind of cute. It's about a girl who uh, has like some kind of, I don't want to go in too much into it, but has some kind of supernatural presence who ends up working at a preschool. It's really, really cute. Except, oh boy, except it's a sequel to Wish. Um, if Clamp had told us that, like if Clamp had been really open about that right in the beginning, I would have been okay. But as it stands, you get to about volume four or five, and it's suddenly revealed that it's a sequel to Wish. Um, if you're even interested in the series, read Wish first, because there are major spoilers for Wish in this, and not cool, Clamp. Not cool. Uh, Gate 7. Eh, not really much to talk about. The artwork's really, really beautiful. I mean, look at this. I mean, that's just gorgeous. It's just muddled with really, really bad dialogue, and... Just a story that doesn't really make much sense and leaves, especially an American viewer, absolutely confused. Um, I don't recommend it. The Stellar Six of, oh gosh, I'm going to butcher this, uh, Ginsha Ko. Uh, it's, it's all right. I'm actually looking for volume three. I got this in a Crunchyroll manga pack that they didn't tell me what was going to be inside of it. It's all right. Uh, if you're into shoujo, if you're into like fun friendship stories, it's eh, pick it up if it's on sale. Fooly Cooly, Volumes 1 through 2. Uh, if you're a huge fan of the anime, check this out. The story's a little different from the anime, um, and it's got some changes that are really, really cool. Um, in particular, the uh, girl in uh, Nato's class gets a little more screen time in this, and it's it's really awesome. I definitely recommend it. Uh, this is the Legend of Zelda manga box set by Viz Media, uh, by Kira Himakawa. Um, this is a pretty good box set. If you're a huge Legend of Zelda fan, I definitely recommend picking it up. Um, pretty good quality. I like, too, nice job, Viz Media. I like how, um, the volumes are ordered by publication and not by game. So, like, for example, Link to the Past being second to last rather than first. Um, I will say, though, um, the better manga here are, like, stuff like 
Oracle of Seasons and Oracle of Ages, games that really don't have that much story to begin with, because then uh, Himikawa and her editors, or his, I'm sorry, his or her editors, uh, can actually, like, add stuff of their own. Uh, stuff like Ocarina of Time and Jorah's Mask, um, they're really lackluster. Honestly, you get better story in the games, um, but they're still fun, and I like having them. Alrighty, D. Greyman. Oh, D. Greyman. It's it's on permanent hiatus, although I hear there are rumors that it might be coming back. Um, for what it's worth, though, I liked uh, I wanted to pick up the first six volumes of it, because I really do like it. I re like the uh, character of Crowley most, actually. <laughs> um, it's it's alright. I mean, it's like horror shounen. Uh, so if that sounds cool to you, I'd say check it out. Alright, now we got Attack on Titan 1 through 15. Uh, Kodansha Comics has actually been doing a really, really good job with this release. Um, super, super awesome job. Definitely pick up this volume or start reading from here on. There's some crazy, crazy stuff coming uh, in Season 2 for you anime-only viewers. What more needs to be said? Uh, this is Attack on Titan No Regrets. It is the backstory of Levi. Uh, if you are not that big of a fan of Levi, skip it. Uh, if you are, check it out. It's okay. Um, it's by a different author than uh, Attack on Titan, and the art's like a little better, but in my opinion, it doesn't get some of the like some of the raw grittiness of this. Like if we're if we're to check out this cover again, I mean that's just so raw. It's it's hard to explain. It's like it's ugly, but in a good way. Um, and some of No Regrets doesn't capture that, in my opinion. But it's all right for what it's worth. Uzumaki, this is a scary manga. It's it's um it's more like funny scary though. Uh, for the title, though, I think they should have translated it to Spiral, because, I mean, the whole series is about spirals. I won't get too much into it, for spoilers' sake. Um, but you really, really grow to fear spirals in this. And I think the name Uzumaki for English readers just doesn't hold as much value as the word spiral by the end of things. That's just my own opinion, though. Parasite Volumes 1 and 2. Um, there are eight volumes of this. I would totally pick up the rest of it. But, uh, you know, Uzumaki to me is, like, pushing it as far as, like, the spines go. Some of the later volumes just have some really disturbing imagery, and um, I personally don't like to have a lot of that on my shelf. It's just a personal thing. Um, Parasite, though, is well worth it. These editions are fantastic. Although, I should warn people that there is a major spoiler at the end of this volume as a preview for this volume, so buyer beware. Uh, Dead Man Wonderland Volumes 1 and 2. Um, I really like the manga of this. It's okay. Um, I didn't really, I don't really justify buying more of it though, because in my opinion, it's really, really good in the beginning, and it kind of just tapers off a bit. Um, but if you think I should buy other volumes, let me know. Blue Exorcist volumes one through eight. This one is a guilty pleasure of mine. Um, I really, really am enjoying it. Um, I will admit though, it's these volumes are kind of slow. Like it has an awesome start, and then it kind of just get slower and slower and slower. Like right now where the manga is, it's just super slow. I really can't see myself picking up more than eight volumes. Uh, Blood Plus, the manga adaptation of the anime. Um, I really, really don't like um, manga adaptations of already established anime, but this is a big exception along with uh, Fooly Cooly up there. Um, they did a really, really good job with this. Um, there are some story elements that have been changed. Um, so it's definitely w well worth picking up, even if you've seen the anime. Uh, the ending's very different. Um, and to be honest, I'm not really sure which one I like more, this or the anime. So that's a, that's a very good thing. Good job. My love story. This is incredible. Um, if you are not a fan of shoujo because... Uh, you really don't like how most shoujo series like have really BS drama with relationships, pick this one up. It is a comedy that takes place where most shoujos end. It's all about a relationship. Um, and I don't want to talk more about it uh, because, uh, I mean, it's just the surprise of it all is just so good. Um, there's no BS like love triangles, you know, there's no long lost twin brothers that come in to mix up things. It's just really, really good. I mean, like, just look at this cover. Like, it doesn't get any better than that. Gigi Ko's Champion Cup Theater, one volume. This is 
This is a blast from the past. I was a really big Gigi Charit fan as a kid, um, and this is one of the oldest volumes I have in my collection right now. It's it's so worn by weather and just me carrying it with me everywhere I went. Um, just like a nice little thing. Uh, if you're a fan of Gigi Charit, I definitely recommend picking it up. It's got some really funny moments in there. Uh, Bleach, volumes one through six in Omnibus and 21 and 27. Um, Bleach. <laughs> well, if you know anything about Bleach, you know that it probably should have ended at Soul Society. It used to be one of the big three along with Naruto and Bleach, uh, but after a while it it got kind of eh. Um, my favorite stuff is actually in the first six volumes. Most people, uh, their favorite arc is the one right after this, Soul Society, but I liked it when Ichigo's family was in the uh, plot along with him because I felt like the danger hit really close to home and it just made the manga all the more relatable. Um, I should probably explain what these two are doing here. Uh, volume 21 introduces my favorite character, Shinji. really like him. He's like the best part about everything post-Soul Society. And this has my favorite chapter in all Bleach. Um, I don't want to say any more about that, but it has to do a little bit with uh, the person on the cover. So if you've read it, you know what I'm talking about. Really good stuff. Monica, Monica, Monica. This is another manga adaptation of an anime. Um, it's all right. I, the art's really cool. I especially like how the manga draws uh, Kyube. It's, oh my gosh, he's he's actually, in my opinion, better in this version than he is in the anime. I am not going to explain what this is doing here. Uh, if you've read Monica, you know what that is. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's pretty good. I recommend watching the anime more than the manga, but if you're a fan of the anime and uh, you want a cheap alternative to owning the uh, anime, I definitely recommend this manga. Now this, these three volumes, are the volumes you should pick up if you're a real big Monica fan. Uh, this is The Different Story. It is a um, spin-off about uh, Kyoko and Mami. Um, it was originally based off of a radio drama. I think the radio drama is only, only covers the first volume, and I think the second and third are original content. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, this stuff is really, really, really good. Uh, it's hard to explain what the different story is about without spoiling uh, the original series. Uh, so all I'll say right now is if you're a fan of this, get this. It's really good. And then uh, Tart Magica. Um, this is a spinoff of Magica about Joan of Arc, of all people. Um, I really liked it. I'm a huge, huge fan of St. Joan of Arc, and uh, so it was a lot of fun reading this. Um, again, I can't really go much into the plot without spoiling Magica, um, but this is a series to read after you've seen Magica. It's got a lot of spoilers. Assassination Classroom, volumes one through three. I love these covers. They look great on my shelf. Um, if you haven't read Assassination Classroom and you're a fan of Shonen, definitely check it out. It's it's really, really good. I really like uh, the part where the story is right now uh, in the updated manga. Um, I probably won't pick up any more than this just because I'm not that big of a fan, um, but it's, it's definitely worth your time. I really am enjoying it. Oh boy, Trigun. I got these from a friend um, and it's kind of sad because I, I got through halfway of the first volume and I didn't really like it that much. I really got to power through both of them, though, because I hear it's really good and I hear that the sequel, uh, Trigun Maximum, is supposed to be really good, too. Blood Blockade Battlefront. Same author as Trigun. Uh, this series is crazy. It's really, really hard to follow. Um, I would recommend the anime because the anime makes it a little bit easier to follow the action. However, they cut a lot of content uh, from the manga to make way for the anime, and it's really unfortunate because there's a lot of great stuff in here, um, especially in this volume in particular. There's a really, really good story about the butler that they cut entirely from the anime. So yeah, check that out. Um, it's a lot of fun. Next up, we have One Piece, volumes 1 to 32, <laughs> all the way. Uh, we're going all the way up here. We got 33 through 54 and 55 through 74 plus two Japanese volumes which I'll get into more of why I have those two in a bit. Uh, if you haven't noticed I really really like One Piece. <laughs> I like it a lot. Uh, it's a great series, probably one of the best shonen sets out right now. A lot of people are complaining about the current arc of One Piece being not that great but I should clarify right now that even the worst of One Piece is better than 
most shonen out there. So, yeah, definitely worth your time. Uh, I feel like I should talk about this three-in-one. I do not like the three-in-ones for One Piece. I think that the art that they put on the spine is just horrendous. Um, like, it's all Luffy. It's no other characters. Um, and if you look on the front, they only focus on Luffy on every single one of the covers. And this is the same for every volume. It's not just this one. Um, I feel like it does a really bad disservice to Oda's art. I ended up picking this one up, though, because it was a really cheap alternative to buying three volumes of Skypea. And to be honest, I actually like the art on the spine of this one in particular. I really, really, really don't like the art of the others, though. Just like, oh man, it just, it looks terrible. They ended up doing the same thing with uh, Naruto, and I don't know why. Um, Bleach, though, I mean, they did a really good job with Bleach, so I don't know. Before I continue, I should probably say that where these shelves came from. Uh, these metal boxes, I think were from Ikea. I got them like a long time ago. This used to be a preschool shelf of all things, but I've repurposed it into a bookshelf. And these two used to be laundry cabinets. Go figure. They work really, really well as manga bookshelves though. Um, so yeah. Continuing on with One Piece, I have a data book. Um, they never released these data books in English, which is really unfortunate in my opinion, because there's a lot of cool information in here about characters and stuff that you don't get to see in the regular manga. Um, why I own this one in particular, though, is because, um, if I can get to it, it, it has uh, the Strong World chapter in there, which is not available in English unless you get, I believe, it's the second boxed set of One Piece uh, for the manga. I feel like that's a huge disservice, though, to One Piece fans because, I mean, we're buying the volumes anyway, and a lot of us don't want to shell out money for a bunch of volumes we already have just to get one chapter of the manga. So I ended up just getting this one to make up for it. And actually, I'm going to go ahead and show you why I have these two. As these volumes are now, there's nothing really special to them, except that this one is not out in America yet, so I guess that's a little special. However, if you take the covers off, uh, which I'll do so now, uh, you can see that Dolph Flamingo has been replaced by Panda Man. That's pretty cool. It's something we don't get in the States because we don't have these dust covers. And uh, I especially really like this volume because um, uh, it's got this nice little little artwork of Panda Man. <laughs> I'm a huge fan of Panda Man. I don't know if you noticed. <laughs> uh, actually, I should probably talk about that now. My favorite stuff of One Piece is volume 34 through about 40-ish. Oh, this stuff is really, really good. The Water 7 arc is incredible. In my opinion, One Piece has never been as good as this arc, uh, but the later arcs are still really awesome, especially uh, Thriller Bark over here. Sorry, Chopper. <laughs> um, also, actually, I should probably talk about that too. I have the fourth art book, uh, Eagle. This covers Skypea and the early parts of Water 7. Um, also, I have this little statue of Brook. Uh, this was a gift from a friend. Um, I really, really like it. It's probably my favorite figure I, I own. I also have the Japanese version of volume 35, which is my favorite of the series, and an autograph and drawing from Sunny Strait, the guy who does the English uh, dub voice for Sup. Uh, he was super nice when we met him. Uh, this is actually a drawing my sister did, um, and he drew his own uh, reaction to it, which was pretty cool. Um, I am a huge fan of Usav and Brooke, though. I don't know if you noticed. Oh, and these posters. I actually got them online for 11 bucks. I don't know if you can get them anymore, though, and they're pretty cheap. And I'm not sure if it was an official seller who gave them to me, so. Uh, yeah, pretty cool. Death Note 1 to 12 plus the data book. I, lo I love the data book because it's called How to Read. I'm like, I already know how to read. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's pretty good. It's all right. Um, I will say as a footnote, I really, really like Obata's art. I do not like Oba's writing that much, though. Uh, they are a team who did Death Note. They also did Bakuman. Um, Obata did the art for the manga adaptation of All You Need Is Kill, and it is incredible. His art is really good in this series, too. Um, there is... I mean, this is just a personal thing, so take this what you will. Take this with a grain of salt. Um, there is a little bit of sexist content in Death Note. It's also very, very wordy. It's hard to get through. Um... A lot of people recommend this as people's first manga. I would not. Um, in fact, actually, I would recommend Full Metal Alchemist right over there as, as your first manga if you're getting into manga. Um, I ended up selling my volumes of Bakuman because of some really just sketchy, sexist content. Um, again, it's it's up to the reader. Um, 
I kept Death Note though because I really like the story. I especially really like the ending. I'm kind of in a in a weird camp there. I really really like the ending, unlike a lot of fans. All right, Soul Eater volumes one through three, and the Japanese volumes of fourteen to fifteen, which I actually got years ago, um, as kind of like a fun little uh, thing at a convention. Um, Soul Eater has a really misleading title. Uh, <laughs> I actually have some religious friends who will not read this series because of the title. And I'm religious myself, so don't, don't uh, take that as me bashing religious people. Um, the title is misleading. It's, it's not really dark. It has some dark uh, art, but it's, it's not really that bad. Um, I really enjoy this series, though. <laughs> it's crazy. The action's awesome. Um, and in my opinion, it's way better than the anime. Although the anime has some really, really good action sequences, too. Soul Eater Not, Volumes 1 through 4. Oh, this is a guilty pleasure. Um, Soul Eater Not is a spinoff of Soul Eater. It is a prequel that's really shoujo y about like three girls who go to the academy. Um, and some of these characters make some cameos in there. Um, only get it if you're a really big fan of Soul Eater. It's a super guilty pleasure for me. A Silent Voice, Volume 1. Pick this up immediately. If you're going to get any manga out there right now, get a silent voice. This is so good. It's a story about bullying. Um, I highly recommend it, especially to uh, teachers and parents. Um, teenagers would really, really like this story. Um, it has some kids on the front, but they're only kids for the uh, first volume. They grow up uh, in the second volume. Uh, that's why I recommend it to teenagers, not children, because there are some touchy subjects in here. Um, it's super, super good, though. I would highly recommend it to anyone. I mean, just any fan of manga. <laughs> Popobo. Uh, this is kind of a weird one. Um, a little bit of history. Biz Media originally just published Popobo as this volume only. Uh, it covers the uh, Halukulani arc. Um, this volume in itself, you can only get it used now. Um, it's really, really funny. And if you're just looking for a taste of Popobo, I highly recommend this volume. And then we have volumes one through five. Um, and that's it, because that's all there was published. And even worse, it's actually volumes 11 through 15. For whatever reason, Shonen Jump didn't publish the first 10 volumes. I heard rumors that the author uh, didn't like his art and the story in the first 10 volumes, and that he himself actually petitioned uh, the series to not start at the very beginning over in the States. I don't know how much of that is true. For what it's worth, the content in these volumes is really, really funny. Um, I highly recommend it if you're a fan of comedy. I really enjoy Bobo Bo. Um, and a little side note, I got these used and uh, they came in this like hardcover library uh, format. Um, yeah, buyer beware. Definitely check your sellers on Amazon if you're gonna buy used. Make sure that you know if they're coming from a library or not, or this can happen to you. Um, I'm not going to rebuy these volumes just because, again, really the only way you can get them is used these days. So it's like, eh, who cares? Uh, Blood Plus Adagio. I cannot pronounce that name. Uh, this is a prequel manga. Um, honestly, you can treat it as a prequel to the anime or the manga. Uh, it's really, really good. By the same artist who did the Blood Plus manga adaptation, except it's by a different author. If you're a fan of Blood Plus, I recommend picking up these two volumes. It's really, really solid uh, stuff. Yeah, definitely, definitely look into that. Seven Deadly Sins, volumes one through eight. Um, this is all that's out right now in the States. I really, really, really like this uh, manga. Remember how in Death Note I was talking about being bothered by some of the sexist content? Well, there's some stuff in this uh, series too, especially between these two characters that, again, I really don't like. I'm not bashing anyone who enjoys the series because I love it too. If you're looking for an action-based series, this is one to look into. It's got some of the best action in manga right now. Uh, just incredible stuff. I really, really like it. Uh, Ranma, volumes 1 through 10, Omnibus to 16. Um, the new editions of Ranma by Viz Media, again, buyer beware. If you have some of the old stuff, like this stuff, um, this is not technically out of order. These volumes are out of order. What they did was they took the first and second vol- and parts of the second volume, excuse me, in the first edition and made them the first volume. So when Viz Media came out with this edition, they were like, eh, you know what, we'll just do it the original way this time without warning any readers. So that can get really confusing. Um, so for example, like in the old version, uh, this right here is volume four. 
yeah, that gets really confusing. Um, but other than that, I like the new releases. The translation's better, the quality of the art is better. Uh, this is actually one of my favorite manga volumes of all time. It's from my old collection. Um, it's got one of my favorite stories in it, so I keep it around just because, I don't know, I like it. It's a little memento. And I've got 23 through 36 of the old edition, uh, just as I couldn't wait. And hey, where'd 28 go? <laughs> That's probably being borrowed by uh, one of my sisters. Sailor Moon! I am actually currently lending out my edition of Sailor Moon to a friend, so it's not on this shelf right now. However, uh, this is not the first manga volume I ever purchased, but the same edition of it. Uh, I ended up losing it. I won't really talk about much how that happened. Uh, but uh, I ended up just buying this just for nostalgia's sake. Um, it's it's cute. I like it. I'm a really big fan of Sailor Moon. I understand that it's kind of a cheesy Magical Girl series, but I really like it. Um, and actually, I can talk a little bit about the standard edition now. Um, here's the thing. Kodansha Comics advertised the new English edition as having a more faithful translation. I'm calling BS, all right? Because although the old edition changed Usagi's name to Bunny and had a couple of issues like that, uh, this actually right here, Sailor Moon Stars, uh, is the final arc of the manga. If you've seen the anime as a kid, I actually almost recommend just reading this arc uh, because the, oh my gosh, this is amazing stuff. Um, and actually, I would argue that the old edition of this art arc is better translated. Um, it's, the arc is called Stars, um, referring to uh, the Sailor Scout's um, souls as being pieces of stars, which obviously, um, that kind of gets confusing because they're Sailor Jupiter, Sailor Mercury, obviously they're, you know, they're planets, not stars. Um, but just, it just sounds better. Um, for So instead of calling their spirits stars in the Kodansha version, they call them uh, heavenly bodies which calling Sailor Moon the most beautiful heavenly body that Tuxedo Mask has ever seen is, uh, it just doesn't flow off the tongue very well as stars. Um, and these two are Japanese editions of uh, the manga. I don't think they're ever going to bring these here uh, to the States, so I just went ahead and picked up uh, the first volume and uh, my favorite character's volume. They look really good, and the quality is really awesome, too, of the pages, and there's some color art in there, too. So if you're a Sailor Moon fan, I highly recommend checking those out. Um, at least get the first volume. And on the very bottom, we have Sailor V, uh, Volumes 1 and 2. Um, this is actually what the uh, current edition of Sailor Moon looks like. Uh, so I would highly recommend getting Sailor V if you're a Sailor Moon fan. It's some pretty funny stuff. It's like typical shoujo comedy, uh, but done really well. Um, Buyer beware, though. It's a prequel, but um, it's meant to be read after Sailor Moon. So definitely do not pick up the first and second volume and read them and then read Sailor Moon because there's some spoilers for Sailor Moon, especially in the second volume. Uh, Astro Boy, Volume 3. This covers the Pluto arc. Uh, it was given to me by a really good friend of mine. Um, and uh, I, now that I've read this, I really, really want to read the... Uh, manga Pluto, which this is, uh, which is based on this volume. Um, I hear it's really, really solid, so I'll probably check that out. Alrighty, and we got Dragon Ball Omnibus, volumes 1 through 21. I really, really like the, uh, the image on the bottom there, the drag race. That's so cool. Um, and I actually have seen, uh, later volumes. Master Roshi is driving that car. If you're looking for a cheap way to buy Dragon Ball Uncensored, I definitely would recommend picking up these volumes. Um, the pages are really thin, but, I mean, it's super cheap. Uh, you can buy them on Amazon for, like, $12 a pop. It's taken me forever to get into Dragon Ball, and quite frankly, I think that's a crime. Uh, thanks so much for watching my video. Really appreciate it. Uh, if you want to see more, uh, like and favorite this. Um, I'm planning on making some manga reviews uh, in the future. So if you see any series you like, you want me to talk about more, let me know in the comments. I definitely will do that. Uh, so thanks for watching. Bye-bye.